Welcome everyone to the South Asia Institute, albeit virtually, of course. Uh, my name is Asad Ali Jafri. I'm the executive director here at the South Asia Institute, and we are honored to host this memorial for a very special man whose legacy speaks volumes in the lives he's touched. We have with us today people from around the globe, of course, in different time zones, which in itself is a testament to how widely loved Jalal Saab was. I'd like to now introduce our good friend Zafar Malik, who all of you know. And uh, Zafar Saab, of course, worked with Jalal Saab for many years and had a very special relationship with him. So I want to thank him for organizing this and putting in all of the time and energy in contacting everyone and putting this memorial together. Over to you, Zafar. Thank you. Thank you, Asad. We have a lot of friends. I mean, it's, it's been really very energizing to see that Jalal Saab, even after his passing, so many people have readily accepted and, you know, they wanted to come and uh, honor him and celebrate him. And, you know, and um, it's a testament to a great life that he, he lived a very purposeful life and um, a very vigorous life. Um, and, and um, we are, we are truly humbled and, and honored that uh, you have, uh, all of, uh, have agreed to to come on and, um, and join us in this uh, memorial, I say, but, you know, it's basically a celebration and honoring him for what he did for the last 70 plus years for art. Um, he is, um, of course, I, I spent 20 plus years with him um, in London. And, and uh, even after that, um, but I... And I knew his international reach then, but I was really, truly amazed when I called people and everyone, it's as if the relationships were fresh even today. You know, everyone agreed and they were, some who hadn't heard of his passing uh, grieved, but, um, but most everybody has agreed to, to come on board and, and um, uh, I, I couldn't, unfortunately, I couldn't reach everybody. And um, it, it started, I mean, this started growing, the, um, the number of people who've come on board it started growing. That's why we sent that note about um, limiting the time for everybody because, and, and we want to follow up with you so that we get a more wholesome or fulsome um, uh, reflections and, and your thoughts uh, that will be put on uh, South Asia Institute's uh, website and other platforms to be shared with students, researchers, and others to know uh, the history that um, Jalal Saab created uh, in the 70 years that he was with us. Um, he created several institutions and, um, and, and was at work all the time. I mean, I can't remember a time when he wasn't working except the last two years or so. Um, and um, for me, he was a mentor, guide, and a leader who actually led by example. And um, he made a difference in my life, for sure. Um, and, you know, and taught me um, patience um, and, um, and honoring, the, you know, the work ethic is, was second to none. I mean, so it's, it's really been great. Um, and, you know, uh, it's very funny that, you know, he is... Um, I've had some conversations with friends since his passing and everyone that I talked to, um, of course, we, we mourn his loss, but they were more vigorous and more uh, purposeful themselves saying, we have got to carry on the work. So Jalal Saab, even after his passing, has actually left us some projects to carry on. So we will do that and, and um, honor his legacy in, in that way. Um, South Asia Institute is, uh, as I said earlier in, in my remarks to Dr. Vizdan, is, um, is a great gift to the city of Chicago. Um, and we are sitting here in their uh, seminar conference room, uh, which is a large, large space. And, um, and it's a very befitting place for this uh, particular occasion. So with that, I would like to... Um, thank the host, Shirin Afzal, um, who uh, we were talking um, and they, they 
phone and you know we were reminiscing about Jalal and then it dawned on me I was I'd been you know kind of um, thinking about and mulling over how to pay tribute to Jalal Saab and um, it just dawned on me in my during my conversation with them that I should ask them and they enthusiastically agreed so it's been wonderful that you know this is the this is the ideal place to hold um, it's a, a kind of memorial, uh, a celebration, uh, and and to honor him. So, um, with that, I will ask um, uh, Shirin and Afzal to share their thoughts with us. They knew Jalal, and um, if they could sh uh, share with us, you know, their thoughts about about him and. I think I'll go first. Uh, thank you, Zafar, uh, for getting us all together. Um, and thank you to Asad for giving up your Sunday to provide all the technical help. We couldn't do this without you. Um, and I want to welcome all of you who are um, here on this Zoom session. Welcome you all to South Asia Institute. Um, it has to be virtually today, but uh, we hope that before long, um, we'll see you here in person. Um, so thank you to all of you for joining us in this celebration of the life of Jalal Saab. Um, I've always said that art brings people together and that was how we met him. Uh, it was because of our mutual interest in South Asian art. Um, we would usually meet Jalal uh, on our yearly trips to Pakistan and uh, we missed seeing him uh, after his move to Lahore. Um, and what I always remember uh, about him is his tremendous energy. Uh, I often wondered where he got it. Um, and I think I've now discovered uh, his secret. There's actually a body of scientific work that demonstrates that people who are involved in the arts live uh, healthier and happier and longer lives. So good news for all of us. Um, uh, now for Avzal and myself, he was, a treasure trove of knowledge about the art of the subcontinent. Um, may he rest in peace. And now that he's uh, together with Azra once again, um, I'm gonna hand off to Abzal. Hello, uh, thank you, Shireen. Welcome to all of you from South Asia Institute. It is an immense honor and pleasure for South Asia Institute to sponsor this Zoom event to remember, honor, and celebrate the life and the accomplishment of the giant that Jalal Sa was. I want to especially thank Asad Jafri, our executive director at the South Asia Institute for his technical and logistical support. Shireen and I first met Jalal Sa when he came back to Karachi, starting working on the FOMA Museum project. We often talked about our common interest in art and need for an encyclopedic book about the Pakistani art that Shireen and I were willing to sponsor, a book that he would write or help write and undertake his publishing. The project never got off the ground because of his failing health. Each one of you who is going to speak today knew Jalal Saab much better and for a longer period of time than we have and had a special bond and relationship with him. It'll be interesting to hear your stories and document them for posterity. And this is exactly why South Asia Institute was established to connect the creators of all forms of South Asian art with critics, historians, and teachers and to the audience of art or the end users of the art for the mutual benefit and enjoyment of art. So together we can make this world a better place for everyone. Now I will turn the Zoom proceedings over to Zafar, without whose leadership today's event would not have been possible. Thank you, Zafar. Uh, take it from here. Thanks. Thank you for hosting this. I mean, this is just such a the more I sit here, the more I realize how befitting a place this is for, especially for a tribute uh, to somebody who loved art. Um, Jalasa would have loved that. Um, 
I also want to thank Asad for all the technical help that he's providing um, as we speak, actually, even, even now. So thank you, Asad, for, for the wonderful support, because I think without him, we wouldn't have been able to do all this technical stuff. This is a, this is a new, new norm, and um, most of us are actually not quite used to it. Um, I also want to uh, request, um, I can see Rahat, but I don't see Anwar on the, on the screen. Um, I want to, uh, the sons of uh, Jalal Saab, I want to ask them to uh, say a few words about their illustrious father. Rahat, uh, maybe you can say something and-, and Yes, as, as the younger sibling, as I always skip the queue, so I'll do it once again. If my father had been there, he would have just uh, chuckled and said, oh, he did it once again. Okay, I'll go ahead of him and I'll just, uh, well, I don't have to say much. I, I'm, I'm here to hear you people and, you know, my God, so much there in front of me. Um, I'm overwhelmed, but still, it's one of those occasions I have to say something and I will. Um, uh, I am totally... Uh, you know, don't know what to say, but I would like to start first of all uh, thanking uh, thanking Zafar Malik, um, A.K.A. Zafar Bai. We used to call him. Uh, we have met over, over over these few years that we have been together, and he is just like a brother. Um, I would especially like to thank Abzal Saab and and Shin Saiba, and of course our our host uh, Jafri Saab. Sir Jafri Saab, thank you so much for all your help. Um, if, if COVID allows, allows us, hopefully soon, the first thing I'll do is, is hop on my, in my car and take the eight hour uh, round to Chicago and thank you guys personally, yeah, shaking your hands and, and saying thank you so much. It's, it's really um, overwhelming and it's really very, very nice to see all this. And now I realize all the more, uh, to me, he was a father. And I knew a lot about him, but some of the things I did not or probably would not have known had I not seen all these people. And I'm, I really look forward to hearing from all of you what you have to say if, uh, and, and, you know, cherish this all my life. And, and this will be great. Uh, to all of you, like I said, I really thank all of you. Um, I may not be able to do it individually to each one of you, but I promise you this. Here's the caveat. I would try and reach as many of you as I can and say personally thank you, not now, later on after this, this uh, moot is over and, and, and try to, you know, um, good opportunity to meet with you, say hi to you. Uh, some of you are, I know very well, others I will, inshallah, soon. And that will be a great, great pleasure. Um, I have joined in today, like I said, just to hear you people, not to talk too much, just say a few things about my father. My father is my friend, you know, as my buddy. Um, he used to do uh, things which probably you people don't know. So I'll share just a few of them and, and, and then move on. One of the things uh, he, he would say most of the time is uh, he would always urge us to do things and, you know, take things in our stride, never give up and, you know, be gung-ho and, you know, strong in doing things. And one of the things he used to say in, in Urdu, it's, it's a couplet in Urdu, um, and I will probably translate it for the benefit of those who would not know Urdu. But in Urdu, it, he used to say, Beta, Dunyai jaha ko fani samjo, har shay ko ani jani samjo, par jab karo agaz koi kaam bada, har saas ko ek umre jaan vidani samjo. And this was perhaps his motto all his life. And he, he did that, he showed it by doing it, and, and he asked us or urged us to do as well. What it simply means was that the world is just a passing phase. Treat everything as such. But once, once and if you do embark on a project of significance, consider a treat that single breath as a life in its own self. This is what he always used to urge us on, and I, I remember that. Um, one of the things about my father, which probably uh, most of you don't know, uh, he did not know much Punjabi. But there was one couplet in Punjabi that he had learned from me. And he used to tell me every time, Rahat, tell me what it is. And then explain to me. And then I would do that. And then he'll say, try to sing it. Well, obviously, I'll not do that in front of you here because I, I want you to stay. 
but you know then i would sing it for him in my own imitating style and and you know trying to be the mr bhatti who used to sing it very well and all but what he said was uh, was something very nice and he used to hum it you know whilst working small things here and there and he would say sada na baghe bulbul bole sada na baghe bahara sada na ma pe husn jawani sada na sohbat yara simply means that you know uh, a time comes where each one of us has to go and all our friends will not be there all the time but we can carry with us the good memories that that we have of them and lo and behold uh, my father was just an epitome of that particular uh, uh, sign or, or or that particular feeling he really carried the day with all his love and affection not with us as children but with uh, with our our old family you as as his extended family so i am i'm really really uh, very grateful and uh, i i would just i i would just uh, like to recall something uh, that he used to say in urdu as well um he was very fond of uh, a poet by the name of jigar and one of his uh, couplets he used to always recite in fact my mother as well they used to do it together when we would sit on our dinner table one um, most of the evenings and after we have had a sumptuous dinner or or a, or a food and then we would obviously go into talking about arts and culture and and literature and all that dil ko sukoon ruh ko aaram aa gaya maut aa gayi ke dost ka paigham aa gaya and he was a walking example of this exactly the way he he went away the way he spent the life was all part of that so with that i would i would just say um, he was a great dad he was a fantastic dad no doubt um, like all dads would be but he was also a fantastic friend and uh, although my arabic is not that good but i i know i i i can say this very safely rest in peace dad kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut haqqad inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun and uh, we all wish him well i'm sure somewhere up there he's there listening to us perhaps and as usual in his own imitable style uh, urging us on to go ahead and do things thank you so much i now look forward to listening to each one of you one by one great thank time you. thank you so much raat for that very touching uh, reflections on on your father and uh, i believe anwar is not on so so i i think i'll go on to uh, i need to acknowledge some more people and um, um i wanted to acknowledge salima hashmi nilufa farro marsala nasam Marilyn Davis and Sajid Rizvi for their encouragement during this time when I was planning this and their wise counsel. So with uh, that being said I'm once again truly humbled uh, by your presence here and um, we've decided to be democratic uh, and uh, go alphabetically uh, I will ask uh, all of you in the alphabetical order of last name um, and to share your thoughts with us. all of you are very eminent and um need very elaborate introductions um and uh, to match your accomplishments but i'll uh, beg your forgiveness um if i skip the intros because of uh, to uh, uh, time limitations and um but i promise you one thing that you know when when we prepare this document uh, this recording uh, i will actually will um put um uh, your affiliate your your introductions properly so that everyone who actually views it um then can see uh and and be introduced to all of you um so with that um i wanted to actually ask salima hashmi because she had a prior uh, engagement somewhere so that's the only exception i'm making is um to ask uh, salima ji to to share her thoughts with us it's a strange moment in the world uh, but i think that what is remarkable is that we can use this time and this manner um to connect and to be able to to remember a very wonderful man whose contribution is immense um and if i can have a couple of minutes just to recall 
what a difference he made in my life and how I came upon um, what, he, what he did for many other people. It was just by chance I was maybe 13 or 14 years old. And um, I came upon this book in my father's bookshelves. At that time, I was a school girl, a school girl who liked to draw and paint. Still not terribly sure about where I wanted to go in my life. And there were a lot of books on art in my father's library. But this one spoke to me. It was about us. And when I looked through it, there were some familiar figures in there, some familiar names. People who I knew through their work and through uh, the fact that they moved through the house. And it became crystal clear that it was possible that this is what I wanted to do uh, with my career. So that was, you know, and if, for a 13 or 14 year old girl uh, to have had this moment uh, through his book was, I think, significant. Um, years later, when I went to NCA, both as a student and as a young teacher, um, Jalaluddin Ahmed was very much a fixture when he was in the hall. Um, and very often he would be in the company of people who one knew, like Zubair Dhaba. Shakirindi, of course, was uh, from NCA, the principal. Uh, he knew my father, so he would be in his company. But I think the fact that we really, really talked about what his passion was, which was documenting what there was, happened after um, I started the Rotas Gallery in Islamabad. 1981, and I wrote the odd review, and he came across it, and he he found me, and he said, "This is what you have to do. Nobody is writing, and you must do this." Um, and I said, "You know, I'm an artist. I'm, I'm practicing artist. I'm a teacher. I don't have time." And he would just not hear a word of it. He had a way of totally ignoring any kind of excuse that you try to make, and say, "Ha ha ha!" Yes, yes. But, and then he would hold forth about why it was important and how it was essential. And if I didn't do this, my life would be wasted and so on. And um, sometimes not even wanting to, uh, I did, I did what he asked. And I remember that when I sent him catalogs that I'd contributed to, um, you know, when other publications that I'd written, I would always get a response. And when I sent him my first book, I, you know, I can't even tell you the joy in his voice when he called me up and he said, my name, you know, I showed it to my wife, I showed it to us. And the thing is, we have decided this is the first of many books. And I said, hold it, it's probably going to be the only book. This is the one that was on the women artists of Pakistan. He said, what, you made such a great beginning and you have to do this. There was another book that I had contributed a major article to. He called. He went over my arguments. I could tell that he'd read every line. And the praise was, I thought, totally unwarranted. But he had a way of doing it that you felt, OK, if he is so encouraging, maybe this is something that I should be doing. And I found that he did that with everybody. He had the time to give to people and making them, making them so much part of the movement, which is Pakistani art. Helping to put it on the map was one of his very major contributions. And it started in 1954, and it continued, I think, until the last year of his life. He came to see me. He was not well. But when I told him about my next project, he almost jumped. And he said to his son, Dekha, Dekha, you see, you see, she's, she's doing this. I often thought that um, what he has left me with, firstly, is a tremendous sense of responsibility. And secondly, there is this guilt that if I don't do what he has entrusted me with, I think I will, I will not be equal to the memory of Jalaluddin Ahmed. 
So his, I think his mission has been passed on to many people, all of whom he came into contact with. And it is, it was a privilege always, but also I think the addition to one's life because of what he did and letting us know the significance of what we do in however small a measure it is, is something that, well, it's unforgettable. A memorial to him is a very little least that we can do. I hope we can do more. I would like to see somehow resources made available so that there could be a Jalaluddin Ahmed scholarship, there could be a Jalaluddin Ahmed research residency, so that the work that he started and made his life's mission does not end with our saying goodbye to him. But it begins a new chapter. That is what I would like to see. And I hope all of us who remember him will try to do our best to make that actually happen. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a privilege. And though I can't hear you, I will definitely hear the recording. And um, uh, so, well, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ayma. You've been such a touching tribute um, and wonderful ideas, you know. And um, we will uh, come back to you shortly. And, and seek your guidance. As I said earlier, your wise counsel and your encouragement has means a lot to me. So thank you for making our time. I know you're pressed for another meeting. So um, with that, thank you very much. I'll, I'll um, let you go and then we'll move on. And um, uh, I think uh, Jazuddin Saab is on. Thank you for joining us. It's, it's really, truly an honor. Well, I'll be brief. Uh, my name is Ijazuddin. I'm a chartered accountant who's uh, lost his way and become an art historian. <laughs> this happened many, many years ago when I was cataloging the Lahore Museum collection of miniature paintings, which I did at the behest of uh, Shakar Ali Saab, who at that time was the principal of the National College. Um, that book was later published um, in uh, 1977 by Sadhubi uh, Park Bennett in, uh, in Oxford University Press. My first contact with Jalal Saab was in Islamabad, and uh, at that time, I had gone on some visit or the other, and I met him through uh, Zubayda Abdi. And then on his visits to Lahore at Shaka Sab's place, and the connection was sustained um, when uh, Jalalsa went abroad and he published Arts, Asia, uh, Arts in Asia magazine. And on the cover of one of the issues was a painting called Black Moon by Shaka Sab, which uh, coincidentally, just fortuitously, I acquired from Shakir Saab many years ago, later. So that remained a connection. And uh, Jalal Saab and I, he wanted me to contribute to the magazine. I, I, I think I did one article. Yeah. But since then, he remained in uh, London and then went on. But we remained in communication. Um, the last time um, I met him, or rather the last time we were in contact, I used, I write for Dawn on a regular basis. And I would copy my articles to him. And my last communication with him was a very odd one because he sent a message to Ijaz giving remarks, giving his, you know, warm regards to uh, Musarat. And I realized that he had caught the wrong Ijaz because he meant Ijaz al Hassan, not me. So I teasingly wrote back and I said, I think you've got the wrong Ijaz. Um, I am, you know, AIJ Z. So he immediately responded. He said, no, 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 I know who you are. You keep sending me your articles and I so enjoy them. And I have as much regard for you as I do for, uh, but he, at that time, it was a sad message because he mentioned that he was coming for treatment, uh, medical treatment. So we had a distant communication, but I, accepting the role of, in a sense, being the Pakistani Vasari, who was recording um, the lives of the artists, of Pakistani artists, and, and then later sound artists, artists, um, and bringing their works through his writings and his compilations to a much wider audience. And so from that point of view, I think his uh, work, the work that he began, will never finish, because there'll always be people who will be following in his footsteps, 
and not just in his footsteps, but following the lead that he provided. And when uh, the, for example, the South Asian Institute that um, Zalbai and Shireen have put in, have established, it's wonderful that somewhere in the United States, Trump notwithstanding, there is this microcosm of culture, of um, uh, awareness, of sublimity, which um, showcases the work of artists whom many of the visitors to your institute will perhaps will never meet. But that is the whole point of art, is that through their works, they are in contact with a general public and a much wider public, and hopefully a more appreciative public. Because here in Pakistan, while we have an enormous talent, an enormous reservoir of artists who are producing fantastic work, and whether it is Shaza Sikandar, whether it is, I could give you a whole host of names. Um, but the most important thing is that their work now has an international platform. So they cease to be Pakistani artists in the same way as Indian artists have ceased to be Indian artists, but are more artists of the world because they're conveying ideas which may have germinated in one particular area of the subcontinent, um, but have been, those are now available worldwide through platforms such as this. I honor Jalal Sab for the kindness that he showed me when I was a much younger person and he was a bureaucrat. Um, and we used to have lengthy conversations in Zubeda's room uh, underneath and behind her was a small painting done by Amrita Sher Gill. And it was a lady in a red sari. I don't know what's happened to that painting now. It did kind of disappeared, but it's always been a memory of mine of a kind of triangle. Jalal Sab, Zubeda and Amrita Sher Gill a kind of golden triangle, which is the earliest memory I have and perhaps the fondest memory I have of Jalal Sir. But thank you once again for this opportunity of being able to honor him in absentia. But I know that the person who doesn't need to be here, but is here because all of us are here is Jalal Sir. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those very profound words, Ijaz Sir. Thank you. Um, it really has been an honor listening to you and um, we will come back to you actually we need to have some more of your uh, thoughts and reflections on this and uh, um, hopefully soon we'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you very much for that. Um, I will now ask uh, Dr. Rizan Ali. Thank you for joining us and, um, and you have had a great association during the London Times and, and beyond. So I'll, I'll uh, give the mic over to you. Actually, uh, some of my uh, memories of Jalal and Azra are rather funny because all of a sudden, uh, I don't know how, why, when, I got uh, obsessed by having an exhibition of contemporary Islamic art in England, in London in particular. And I discussed it with Jalal and Azra, and they were all for it. We didn't have a cent to pay a gallery or an agent or do uh, anything towards that. But still, uh, being my stubborn self, I looked at all the um, museums and I wouldn't accept, accept uh, a good museum. And I went, we, Jalal and I got on the bus and we went to um, the, you see, I'm, I'm a cancer survivor. So sometimes my memory gets uh, lost, uh, this call. Uh, Chemofog, yeah. <laughs> it's called, but anyway, uh, otherwise it's okay. So we went to the Barbican. Why the Barbican, I still don't realize, don't understand. Why did I choose the Barbican? And Jalal thought it was a brilliant idea. Went and spoke to the director of the Barbican and explained. One of the first things he told us, is there art in the Islamic world, modern art? So of course there is modern art in this. And Jalal next to me just 
was trying to, to uh, quiet me down, not to lose my temper. And um, I said, what sort of art? Quranic art and decorative art? I said, you know, there are other forms of art like you have in the West. Uh, not only these are the basics, Quranic art and uh, uh, calligraphy, but anyway, I explained to him that we have as good uh, contemporary art as they had. And I had taken from the collection of the Jordan National Gallery, uh, at the time there were slides, and I showed him the slides, one where he looked at them and he said, yeah. I said, these are done by artists from the Arab world, from Pakistan, from uh, Brunei Dar es Salaam. He said, yeah. I said, yes, Brunei Dar You know, in the West, in London, they had not heard of few Islamic countries. And I was really shocked. I thought that was very ignorant on their part. Anyway, we spoke and then he said, but somebody, I said, the catalog, who's paying? I was, this was always my concern. Who's paying for the catalog? You have to pay. He said, catalog? What catalog? What are we going to put in it? And Jalal said, ha, of course, <laughs> we have so much material about the history of ours in our part of the world, in the Islamic world. Anyway, we concluded that we have to uh, pay for the catalog. I said, okay, I raise the money. How? I, I, I had no idea. But we did raise the money at the end. And we came with uh, this exhibition, Contemporary Art from the Islamic World. And there were countries uh, like Brunei, Dar es Salaam, um, Bangladesh, Algeria, uh, Egypt, the Gulf countries, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Libya, Malaysia, Morocco, Pakistan, Palestine, Sudan, Syria, Tunisia, Turkey, and Yemen. You know, in Yemen, nobody had written one line about contemporary art there. Not a line that I could... So anyway, uh, I, I wrote the chapter. On Yemen. It wasn't very extensive, there wasn't much material, but I did it. And uh, we got people like uh, Del Afroz Qadr from uh, Bangladesh, uh, Haji Maktoussin bin Omar from Brunei, uh, Hussein from Egypt, of course, he's well known, and other uh, Kamaran Diba from Iran. May Muzaffar, Iraq, and we came out with the, uh, uh, the first, and I think until today, the only lit written document on contemporary art from the Islamic world. And that was in 1989. Now, everybody thought that Jalal and I and Azra were off our rockers. Nobody except um, very few people who uh, believed that we could pull it through, and we did pull it through. And um, there was a, a prince, and a, a British prince, he opened it with Prince Hassan from Jordan at the opening. I remember his name. I told you this chemo fog is, is, is horrible. Uh, not Prince Charles, well, his cousin, <laughs> wherever it is, anyway. And. Um, Michael of Kent. Excuse me? Prince Michael of Kent, I think, opened it. No, not Michael of Kent. His brother. Not Michael of Kent, anyway. And uh, this book is still the earliest book on contemporary art from the Islamic world. And it was a great success, the, the um, exhibition. And from there, we could go to other places, other countries uh, than England. We went to, with the, not the same exhibition, but an improved one and a more extended one, and um, to uh, the uh, 
to, to Paris, to uh, Pakistan, to many, many, many countries. And uh, from there also, the Jordan National Gallery of Fine Arts could extend. And uh, now we have over 5,000 works in our collection from the whole of the Islamic world. Some countries we never went back to, like Brunei, Dar es Salaam, unfortunately, but I, I plan to. Jalal, his faith, although with no base at all, it is what made us go forward. Him and Azra, they had faith in what we were doing. And this was very, very, very important. When everybody thought I was off my rocker, he believed and Azra believed that we could pull it through and have a collection. We had um, a wonderful collection now that we have at the Jordan National Gallery. And we have uh, wonderful publications also on contemporary and modern Islamic art. And although unfortunately the magazine stopped uh, coming out, and uh, but it was a very strong be beginning and it, it's the basis in many libraries in the West, unfortunately, not in our part of the world, in the West to find um, data and to find information about uh, Islamic art, contemporary and modern Islamic art. I think this in itself is a great service Jalal did to our countries, to the Islamic countries. And instead of thinking that Islamic art is decorative, okay, it is mashrabiyas and uh, fountains. No, Islamic art goes deeper than this, although that, that was a part of it as well. And I'm very proud to have worked with him and Azra. The, we, I must say, with all humility, we were able to introduce Islamic art, contemporary and modern Islamic art to the world, not only the West. Because in our part of the world, people didn't know about it, contemporary Islamic art. Not only the West didn't know about it. And this is something I'm very proud of, to have been part of it with Jalal and Azra. And Alhamdulillah, we were able to achieve this since there are now museums. There is this in Qatar, there is this in Dubai, there is that in Iraq. But where was everybody? when we needed them at the time. And we did it alone. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for that recollection. Uh, you know, you took me back to all those years, you know, and um, you're right, absolutely right in su suggesting that, you know, Jalal's major contribution was uh, establishing a base, as you used to say, it's a big tent that he established and and others will follow. And that has happened actually in a lot of cases. So uh, I'm grateful that you joined us and that you shared and uh, that recollection of, of those wonderful days. They were actually beautiful days. And, and um, I'm sure, as you said, your prayers, that things will continue uh, to move um, in a better way in, in the, in the Muslim, Muslim world. Um, with that, um, I will now ask, um, I think people are having some trouble in Karachi, uh, so I'm going to skip one of the speakers who was actually before, Sharif Azuria Al Jafri from Kuala Lumpur. And I think uh, it is quite late, uh, but uh, Sharifa is on. So Sharifa, I hand the mic over to you. Thank you and welcome. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Lovely to well, see you. It was uh, a surprise when I received your message in the, on the Facebook about Jalal. And 
it gave me a shock, you know, to find that she's gone. I would like, first of all, to say al Fatiha to him. If you could, we could all do that now. To yeah. al Fatiha. Amen. Thank you. Well, it's just difficult to describe Jalal. You know? he's, he's such a fantastic human being and his love for the art in the Islamic world is, is, is beyond imagination. And the thing is, all of us went through, you know, somehow other kind of a relationship with him in different ways. Uh, and the uh, thing is for us to be able to understand him. The thing is, we, Jalal, is, how do I meet Jalal? It was through Raja Fuzia. Raja Fuzia was an Ishika, and she had done the project with him. And then they suggested, they suggested that we should have a special Malay sub, a Malaysian supplement in the arts in the Islamic world. And then Raja Fuzha then contacted me and somehow they got me roped in to, to do this supplement. And it was, it was quite an experience, you know, working with Jala. And I... I felt that he he was he was a, a fantastic person. He, in fact, you know, he would not even take any funds with, with string attached for his magazine. If funds has got to be, you know, given to him outright, no, no string attached, no. Uh, a special deal and that sort of thing. So he's a man of integrity, of principle, and his love for the Islam, art in the Islamic world is beyond imagination. And the thing is, he, he started off very, with very little money. And in fact, you know, he, it was, I think, uh, Muazam, Ali was a, with the Council of uh, Europe that provided some funds for the uh, production of the magazine. The thing is, he, he would then get me to do um, a special report on Malaysian art, every issue in the magazine. And Jaffa will come to Kuala Lumpur to sort out the photographs and select them for publication. It was a privilege for me to be able to work with him and to understand and also to appreciate some of the art that I don't even know. So it's through him I learned a lot too. And he organized uh, the conference on Islamic, on art in the Islamic world as well, besides the exhibition at the Barbican Center. And it was a success because we had so many participants from from outside, you know, at the conference. He has a way of getting people involved in, in the appreciation and promotion of the art in the Islamic world. And, and the thing is, he would never know or I can't do it, it's not in his vocabulary. He, as far as he's concerned, that you know, there's no such word in the 
in in his vocabulary. When we, I got to know him in 1997, 1987. That's when we started the special spot supplement. And it appeared uh, in the summer, springs of 1988. Besides that, we had also some funding from, from Malaysia to produce that, that supplement. It's difficult to talk about someone who's so... I, I know. So much. You know, I got very, in a, in a way, you know, personally with him because of the uh, the supplement that we did, and also he would get me to organize or get some other materials, you know, for the exhibit for the magazine as well. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, he. He's such a simple person, yet with great ideas, and I have great respect for him, for his integrity, for his uh, principles, and for his for his for for his uh, you know belief in what he wants to do. And the thing is, he never gave up and, and keep going on and doing things even when, when he had you know, no fun, he was able to do it. And it's, it's so, I'm sorry. I okay. just said a loss of words. Okay. I can't express Thank myself and about Thank food. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharifa. That's very touching. Uh, that's very heartfelt, you know. Thank you for joining us. I know it's 11 p.m. your time, you know, and uh, you stayed up. I'm so sorry about it, you know. But I just feel that emotionally, I'm so yeah. Yeah. upset that I couldn't. Well, stay strong. What I was going to say. Stay strong because that's what he would have wanted to, for us yeah. to carry on. Carry God, on like bless his soul. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharifa. Really, I'm very touched by your presentation. Thank you. It is a huge honor for us to be invited. It's a very humbling situation to be in and thank you Abzal and Shireen and I'm seeing some of our very close friends here, Raja Fuzia after years and seeing you in this <laughs> lovely to see so many of you and Rashid Ashwad Sahab as well. Beha shukriya. Ham sab ko yaha, ham dono ko bulaane atila. Thank you. Actually, I think uh, J uh, Jalal Sahab is watching us from above with a twinkle in his eye and a sort of benign smile <laughs> on him, urging us to go on. Um, when he started taking out these, this magazine, both Nurja and I were very impressed. In fact, we have the whole collection with us. Um, and we eagerly sort of looked forward to it, to uh, each new publication that came out. Jalal Sahib was interested in everything around him, interested in everything to do with art or education. He got in touch with us when we had started the Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture in Karachi. And he was very keen to find out about it, about the curriculum, about what we were doing. And, you know, it was, it was very encouraging the way that he sort of... Uh, um, spoke and uh, he uh, interacted with, with us. He uh, then 
out of the blue, he asked me to write an article uh, for uh, the magazine. And uh, very reluctantly, I did send my article. I immediately got a response from him by email. Why don't you write regularly? I said, this was, this was a favor to you, really, because I'm not a writer and I'm not a... No, 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 you, you write very well. You uh, must continue. When he moved to Karachi, he was a regular visitor, not only to our house, but to the school. And that's when he actually started encouraging me to write something on architecture. I'm an architect by profession. And I told him, I said, Jalal Sahib, there are better people around me who can write on architecture. And uh, I don't think I'm capable of uh, doing it. So he said, Nani, all right, if you don't want to write on architecture, write on your life's sort of memoirs or memories. Because you've spent a lot of time in India as a child and when you grew up, and then you saw um, India in the, the 50s and 60s, and then you moved to Pakistan, you've seen what there is here, you uh, sort of uh, uh, have that experience of both these countries, you must write something. And actually it was after a lot of discussions when we talked about different personalities there and here and all these, and, hey, you must recollect and recall this and write. So anyway, every time that he met me, in fact, sometimes he called me out of the blue and said, how much have you done? And this went on till the last, until he was here in Karachi. And that was about two years ago when he would call and ask me um, if, if my project has been completed, how much, and he said he wanted to publish it. I said, you haven't even seen the manuscript. <laughs> you don't know what I'm writing about. He said, no, no, I know it's going to be good. I'm going to publish it. And that sort of encouraging thing that, that the way that he, um, he interacted, the way that he treated, at least with, with me and I here, uh, uh, Salima talking about it and uh, um, uh, Jalal Sahib's son talking about it, about him encouraging people to move on and he would push and take an interest, a personal interest. You know, I would feel so elated and feel, um, uh, what should I say, privileged when he would uh, uh, visit and he would come and discuss and, uh, you know, as if I was the only person in his life. And that I think that he did with everybody else, made them feel special. And his humility yes. was another thing. His, his quiet sort of... Uh, uh, his humility, but always a twinkle in his eyes. I think that energy that he, this little frame, little person, he would dart in and dart out with time. He's there coming to see an exhibition or visiting. They would all exude immense energy that was enveloping everyone. Um, I think we will give everybody else a chance, not take too much time. But like Salima said, I also strongly feel that we should, and we both of us are there to support in any way, um, we should carry out, carry on with this mission and uh, with his missions, actually. And there should be something initiated in Pakistan in his name. Um, whether Forma takes on formally his name, Jalaluddin Ahmed Sahib's you know, Museum of Modern Art, something really needs to be initiated in that. And um, so thank you so much for having us. Well, thank you. And, and um, now we'll move on. Um, I'll ask uh, Rashid Darshad Saab. Thank you very much. Uh, Institute, Dr. Shirin, Dr. Ahmed, Zafar Saab, Jafri Saab for connecting me with so many people who, some people are my friends, some, are, some faces are familiar, some faces are famous, so I know everybody, almost everybody. So anyway, uh, I knew Jiralsa first time I saw him in 1967. 
in the Arts Council building in the gallery, which used to host Prachi Artists Annual. And Jalalsa was hanging the paintings. And when I saw him hanging the painting, I thought he is one of the employees of the Arts Council, uh, an assistant or a custodian, you know, doing this job. But uh, I also had joined Central Institute of Arts and Crafts, which was housed in the Arts Council building. And I became very much familiar with the people there. And I learned that the man who was hanging the painting, he was actually chairman of the Fine Art Committee. And he was also working as director of films and publication, I think, in the Ministry of Information. So this was my first interaction. And then after that, we met a, a lot. And uh, he wrote a lot on art. He met artists. And back to this Karachi Artist Annual Exhibition, this exhibition introduced artists like Bashir Mirza and Jameel Lux. They were regu regular exhibitors there. They were, these were their early years. And of course, I was familiar with their paintings. I can re recollect all the painting of that time. They are all very young. We're talking about late 60s. Anyway, uh, I worked with him in the Arts Council because I was also working in the Central Institute of Arts and Crafts. And then we became friends. We knew each other very well. Uh, I, when I came to America, I, I was here for a uh, number of years, then Indus Valley School of Arts and Architecture invited me to take over the uh, fine art department. I became head of the fine art department. Bill Grammy Saab is here, Noor Jan is here, they invite, Noor Jan actually invited me there. So when I was there, uh, Jalal Saab was also working there in Karachi and he was very active with SOMA. So that's the point I want to bring in. And we, some of people have talked about his energy and how much he was uh, persuasive and how much, you know, he was keen to have the mission accomplished. So one day he came to me to my office and I was working late hours and um, I was a bit irritated because he never called me. You know, he never had an appointment when he met somebody, he just came, walked in, and uh, although I was a little mad, but wittingly I said, After that, every time he came to my office, the first thing is uttered is, So he was trying to persuade me to work for FOMA. Actually, he asked me to work after I'm finished with my term with the uh, uh, Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture. Uh, I should work for FOMA, the research department. But unfortunately, I had to come back to USA and I you know, couldn't accept uh, his offer. Now, about his former, there were three buildings in the race course where his office was also. This was an army, uh, occupied or army, army's buildings. Race course was also occupied with the army. There were three colonial buildings and he had his eyes on them. So he told me, that he wants to open, use one building for the fine art museum, the second for the craft museum, and third probably said for the research or library. I don't remember exactly, but this was his mission. And he was working so hard, he was running so hard from one person to another person and from one place to another place to accomplish this mission. Uh, one day he comes to me with a check in his hand 500,000 rupees is a lot, lot amount, you know. And he says, Aftab Tapal, who was attending this meeting right here, he signed this check. I told him that I need money for uh, FOMA, and he signed this check. So he was, you know, so convincing that people knew that he's sincere, he's dedicated, and they, they did best, their best they could do. Uh, after, after working in uh, Karachi, he was, uh, as I said, he was director there. Then he was posted in Islamabad. So I had an exhibition in Islamabad. I met him there. He was again active in Islamabad with the art galleries, with the art. And the gallery of contemporary art was run by uh, Zubayda Aga. So there was some activity. There were not so many art galleries in those days. 
but he was also very active over there. Then at one time he went to London and uh, one of the participants mentioned his London years. And I went to, and he was taking out this very beautiful magazine, uh, Islamic art, uh, which was very rich for his contents and for his layout. So I thought I would give him a surprise. I went to our Khan Foundation in London. Uh, this was located right next to the British Museum. And I went there and I found out that he, the magazine was closed and it, they, he had quit the job. And this is when he came to Karachi. And when he was in Karachi, he was also shuttling back and forth to uh, Sharjah. And he was connecting Pakistani art with uh, Gulf state arts and Pakistani artists with the artists of the Gulf state. So this is, these are the, my, these are my memories. Uh, the only thing I remember is it was very, very energetic. And just one thing, uh, we were uh, driving together and he says, uh, stop here. It was Alliance process in Karachi. He said, yeah, some, something to do with the director. So I said, did you call him for the meeting? He said, no, 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 I don't call people. I just go and get the things done. If you call, make an appointment and go by the protocols. You get, you never get the things done. So just walk in there and we had a negotiation or talking to the director of the alliance process. But this was the kind of man, you know, who on the only thing before was him, his mission. You know, everything else comes, comes next. Thank you very much for, for having me in the meeting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing those thoughts with us. Arshad Saab, thank you. And sorry for all the trouble that you had getting on with that. Um, Farhad uh, Fatakia. Farhad? Hi, how are you doing, Zafir Zab? Hi, um, Farhad. Just, just want to thank you all um, for letting me say a couple of words. I'll be brief. I've prepared some notes and I've tried, I'm going to try and limit myself to about four minutes. Um, I met Jalal in about 2007, at the time I was creating a, I was on a mission to independently create a website for every living Pakistani artist and to highlight their work for free and to provide them with an email address because my family owned and ran an IT company and I felt like it was, after reading Salima's book, which is kind of surreal that she was here, after reading her book, I sort of had this epiphany and I said, this is what I want to do. And I was collecting art, but I, I hadn't made a contribution. I had felt guilty about it. And one day out of nowhere, uh, Jalal walked into my office. Um, I can't even recall who had connected us. He sat down in front of me and said, listen to my plans and was very sort of excited by them. And the first interaction that I had with him was actually a huge argument because he said to me, you know, you should try and align yourself and be part of something bigger than whatever it is that you're doing. He said, your effort is great, he said, but I have this foundation, I have this, this vehicle through which you can execute much more change. And I, I had no idea who Jalal was, I had no clue. And I, I sort of said, you know, I wouldn't have to be doing this um, unless uh, your generation had sort of like got everything together and had actually executed. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Jalal being Jalal sort of looked at me and he said, that's true, he said, but we have a chance to to solve the problems of the past when it comes to art documentation and history in this country. And I said, you know, you're kind of an old guy. I was like, don't be offended. I said, you're probably in your late 60s. Jalal was probably pushing 90 at the time uh, or close to. I said, you're in your late 60s. I was like, I just don't know if I can work with somebody in your age group because I'm not really sure you're gonna be able to keep up. <laughs> Little did I know. Uh, what I'd gotten myself into. And when Jalal sticks his claws into you for the project and, and he props you up, you know, he makes you feel like you're the most important person in the world. And this is something that all of you have said. When he props you up, you feel like you're close to God. You really do. Uh, and, uh, and from then on, we clicked and we're both workaholics and we both worked tirelessly uh, him much more so than I. I was running this business while I was trying to help. And I, I got to interact with him from 2007 to about 2017 for 10 years. At the time, I think Fomet published four or five volumes. They went on to publish another five or six. I had a very small part in that. Um, what I helped him with uh, was 
digitizing the Ali Imam archives and making them completely uh, optical character read so that they could be searched uh, by PhD and dissertation students moving forward because I felt like as an IT company and with the resources that I had, that was my best possible contribution. And he really managed to extract that contribution out of me, not in a bad way, um, but he knew how to motivate people. And I, I just have two very short memories that I wanted to share. About three years into working with him, I think the proudest day of my life while living in Pakistan was when he told me that Rabia Zuberi's book was just recently published by FOMA and I was traveling to Delhi at the time. And he said, I want you to go to the Indian Institute of Art in Delhi and I want you to represent us there. And I sort of said, you know, Jalal, I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not the droid you're looking for here. I said, I'm not, I don't have the background that you have. I don't have, he said, I have faith. He said, just do it. And I remember I was earning about 150,000 rupees a month at the time. And I spent the entire month's paycheck on a suit uh, to be cut just to be able to go to this meeting because I said to myself, if I don't look my absolute best, I'll never forgive myself for the rest of my life. And I went to the, into this meeting and it, it went well, but it went well because he instilled the confidence of the gods in me that I could represent him and I could represent FOMO. That was one. The second memory that I had was to try and cheer him up. I wore that very same suit about three or four years later when he was in the hospital. I think it was, it was, a, it was a minor ailment, but it required him to stay overnight. And I walked in uh, largely unannounced because I wanted to surprise him and, and to try and cheer him up. Uh, and Azra had just left. And here he was. He's lying in, in this hospital bed. And as soon as I came in, I'm not exaggerating, he went up straight, straight in his bed. He was tucking pillows behind him. He said, you know, I'm glad you're here. Why don't you take a seat? I was thinking about the conversation we had last week or two weeks ago before I came in. And I've realized everything that you said doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And obviously, what I thought would be a 20-minute courtesy visit turned into a two-and-a-half-hour debate. I don't call them arguments because Jalal wasn't capable of having an argument with me. Um, he loved me, I loved him, uh, and we argued, uh, we, we debated the use of the limited resources that were available to us uh, in Pakistan, and uh, he was a great guide, and he was a great mentor, and he was probably the greatest Pakistani that I ever met in my life, and I will cherish the time that I had with him, and I will take what he said to me as probably one of the greatest compliments that I received from someone in Pakistan, which was at the end of one of our, you know, back and forths, he sort of looked at me and said, you know, Azra, who I refer to as the leader of the opposition, that's how I used to refer to Azra. He said, I used to refer to Azra as the leader of the opposition. He said, but I think you're worse than her. <laughs> and I said, I think that's a great compliment. And he said, he said, you can take it as whatever it is. He said, but I think you're, you might actually be worse than her. Um, you know, the last thing I want to say is, is that I learned a lot about him. I learned a lot about him and I learned a lot about art from him. But if somebody asked me what the single greatest contribution to my life was that he made, uh, it was what he taught me about how to be a great husband and how to be a great partner in his marriage. And the loss of Azra and the loss of Jalal represent the end of an era for me in terms of being able to see a harmonious, just beautiful partnership. And I apply so much of what I learned from him, watching him and Azra interact in my own married life. And it, it is really, that was really the, one of the great pleasures great pleasures of my 10 years in Pakistan. And I echo everybody else's statements. Uh, we need to carry on the work. I'm happy to, to help put funds towards that. Uh, and uh, we, won't, we won't let him down. We can't. Uh, if we do, his ghost will haunt our homes for 30 days and 30 nights. <laughs> he, won't, he won't let us go easily, uh, even in death. So uh, I want to thank you all for letting me participate. Um, and, um, and I just, uh, 
I'm, I'm honored to have known him. He was, he was one of the best parts of my life. He always will be. Thank you so much. Thank you, Farhad, for those, uh, you know, that wonderful tribute and information. And thank you for sending me that clip. It's very useful. We need to have a discussion over it, and I'll get back to you on that. So, so thank you for joining us today. Um, can I have um, Mohammed Khashivji? Uh, Mohammed, salam alaikum. Yes, thank you. Salam. Thank you very much for organizing this absolutely moving uh, gathering. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words that how did Jalal come into my life and what was the trajectory that we shared together. In 1980, I joined the Secretariat of His Highness the Aga Khan in Paris. And it was the year of the first Aga Khan Award for Architecture, which as you know is the largest architectural prize in the world, not only in the Muslim world, but in the world. And uh, during that year, we were in charge of the public relations aspects and the media aspects of the award. And Hassanuddin Khan of Pakistan, who was the coordinator of the whole exercise, mentioned that we got to send some material to Jalal Ahmad. Uh, Jalal is a person who's running this, this publication called Arts the Islamic World. And I said, Hassan, this sounds like a very big organization. He said, it's phenomenal. He said, it's done by one guy. I said, he's just going to fizzle out in a week or a month. He said, this guy is something. And uh, so we started working with Jalal. And uh, I must say that today, the largest architectural prize in the world, if it's continuous coverage is to be found anywhere, it will be in the back editions of the, of the arts in the Islamic world. So here was Jalal producing a totally outstanding publication at the highest level of professionalism and quality, but did it with such panache, with professionalism, with commitment. And I came to realize much later that Jalal Bai was working on a shoestring. If there's something I came to realize in his endeavor, that the notion, the power of what we call in Islam, niyat, intent, good thoughts, that Jalal could invite the Baraka through his goodness, through his placing his mission before himself. And a man who was very, he was very savvy. He understood how the world worked, but he did not wallow in victimhood. He saw the artistic heritage of the Islamic world. He saw its potential. He saw its ability to give us a better image of the faith through its humanistic expression. And this is where he put his effort. He encouraged artists to come forward. He encouraged people to come forward and contribute the best they were able to give in the name of the faith, not only in terms of their piety, but in terms of their intellect, in terms of their aspirations, in terms of the respect for its heritage. And he did it with, he did it quietly, he did it with love, he did it with integrity, he did it with dignity. I often told people, if there's one person in the Muslim world I put my last shirt on, it would be Jalal. And I used to always joke and tell him this. But let me tell you one or two incidents that were left very close mark in my, my mind and my heart. Jalal must have been such a great person that anybody he introduced me to became my lifelong friend. Because our relationship was based on, on trust, on an ethical encounter, and on honesty. Jalal, we, uh, we were doing some work at the Chautauqua Institution in America. And they wanted some things on the humanistic dimension of Islam. And I was on the board. And they said, we want to hear the voices of Muslim women. And I said that this Princess Wijdan Ali of Jordan, she was a brilliant exponent of Islamic art. And they said, would she come here? And I said, I don't know her. But I knew Jalal had spoken of her because she, him and Azra were very close friends of her. They were like parents to her. And he introduced me to her. And do you know, Princess Wijdan Ali didn't take more than five minutes to agree to come and speak to 5,000 people at Chautauqua Institution to show 
that art is not a taboo in the Islamic world, that we have men and women who can speak to the humanistic heritage with confidence, with, with profundity, with professionalism and with commitment. And that was Jalal's ability to bring this dimension out from many, many people that he had helped to nurture. I would just end with two, three words that Jalal and myself worked together for over 30, 40 years. He always kept me informed. He helped me to connect to friends that I'm now seeing on this gallery, like Raja Fuzia, Sharifa Zuria, close friends of my wife for many years, for 50 years. But Jalal connected the dots. He brought all of us together in a common venture. I never knew Farad Fatakia, but it was Jalal who told me that Farad Fatakia's grandfather, Sorabji Rastamji, and my grand uncle were great friends in South Africa almost 80 to 100 years ago. So wow. these were the connections that Jalal brought into my life. I think Jalal was the connector of the dots. He made people come together, he made them work together for a common purpose. And I would just say that in the field of art, Jalal's contribution in the 20th century has been a one-man civil society endeavor. He worked with his heart. He worked with his intellect. Jalal was no fool. He understood where he was going to. He knew what was needed. He always mentioned the dearth of institutionalization in the Muslim world. And therefore, Zafar, and to Afzal and Shireen, I must say that my heart goes out to you for trying to institutionalize his work. I would just leave you with four small points in this endeavor that can we, as time goes by, increase the space not only to South Asia uh, art, but to Islamic arts. Broaden the horizon because the time is propitious. We need a space where Islam's humanistic heritage can be given prominence rather than people only looking to its legalistic background or in terms of vociferous voices. I think we can recapture this beautiful heritage to speak to the world about what Islam has given and what it can still give. I would say secondly, uh, Zafar, a small book on his life, but a beautifully done book about his contribution to this process. Not a hagiographic book, but Jalal, written in a critical way in his contribution, which has been phenomenal. The third point is that maybe one or two scholarships a year to artists, Muslims and non-Muslims, who will contribute to the promotion of arts in Muslim communities. And the last point, I'm talking to all my brothers and sisters who live in Pakistan, maybe we need a postage stamp <laughs> very soon with his picture on it to say that his contribution to humanism was something that was outstanding in the Muslim world. All I can say, as I've said to many other people, Jalal has left us physically, but his heritage, his ethical pathway, his sense of commitment, his honesty, and his ability to work outside the context of victimhood, to recapture the humanistic tr tradition of our faith as part of the monotheistic faiths, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity is something we must now continue to work on. And there is where I say Jalal will always remain in all our memories as a man, a small man in size, a big man in vision, a man who could take big steps Absolutely. and change the face of what we feel Absolutely. is our heritage. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Muhammad, for that very profound tribute. And thank you for the note. I'm sorry I haven't been able to get back to you, but that touched me so much. It really is very, very beautiful. And, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for your friendship. Thank you. Um, and thank you for joining us. I don't know, where are you? In London or? London, yes. I'm at London, London. In, in, in Rains Park, very okay. close to okay. So not, not very late, okay? <laughs> no, not, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Thank you, Zafar. Thank you. Take care. Um, then I think we can move to Zulfikar Lakhani Saab. See? Welcome. Assalamualaikum. Uh, first, thank Welcome. you very much, Zafar Saab, for inviting me. No, you're welcome. Most welcome. Yeah, I knew Jalal Saab for over 20 years. I think when you were close to 75, something. 
Uh, and we built a very close relationship, uh, primarily because of a common interest in art. Tell you frankly, I'm very lucky to have met him. It was just a coincidence that we met him, at the that I met him. When I first met him, I was very impressed with a single-minded pursuit of achieving, however difficult the vision of getting, of adding to the cultural and artistic landscape of Karachi. You know, the kind of thing which he spoke about at that age, it really inspired me also a lot, being relatively young at, at that time. When most people at his age would be content to be retired, he was in a pursuit of a project that seems but a thought. And he was committed to the appreciation and recognition of Pakistani artists, past and present, in a tangible and constructive way. The concept, realization, and achievements of FOMA were single handedly due to jars of effort, incredible energy, and passion. And I was fortunate to work closely with him. I don't think I met anybody with that kind of passion and energy. And I used to discuss about him with my people in the company who were more than one third the age. And the way when he used to come to the office and walk fast, I used to get nervous. I said, Why are you running all the time? What is the hurry? Yeah, I mean, he would run down the steps at that age, and nearly over 80 years old, turning up and down the stairs, always in a hurry, trying to do things. So just incredible. A kind of commitment and passion here, which is just phenomenal. The artwork that we publish and the cultural events that we held by former speak to his vision and realization of creating and displaying a documented history of Pakistani artists. His life and, and legacy speaks to this. The creation and vibrant reform are many other projects which will remain a testament to a life well lived. God bless him, he will be greatly missed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zufrasa. Thank you uh, for those very wise words. Um, Yasmin Lari couldn't be with us. Uh, she sent a little video clip. Uh, unfortunately, we can't share it here, but it will certainly be part of this. Uh, presentation when it is um, uh, finished and and we will add add that piece to it um, so I'll go on to Professor Iftakhar Malik if uh, he's here so. uh, Salaam Alaikum uh, Salaam Alaikum everybody and thank you Salaam and my regards to uh, the Institute and yourself for organizing it I think it's a very timely event and um, my best wishes uh, from Oxford. I met uh, Jalal Sabmarhum through you, Zafar, because I used to visit you in Muslim, Sa Muslim Sahib's office next to King's Cross. And uh, then we met at uh, the place of uh, our Marhum friend, Ayub Malik. And so I have wonderful memories of uh, this man who was actually uh, an institution. And uh, people who have spoken about him already, and uh, they know more about him and his work than I do. But as a student of history, I do feel that uh, when I met him in the early 90s through your kind offices, uh, Islam was coming up as a big topic. And this was the time when the tragedy was unfurling in uh, former Yugoslavia in Bosnia more than 25 years ago. And this week, uh, sadly, we are remembering uh, that great uh, massacre of uh, Srebrenica. In, in Bosnia. And this is where, you know, this was the context of uh, our meeting. And this is where we felt, you know, many of us, and I know Chinggis used to be there as well, off and on, yourself, Ziauddin Sadar, Ayub, and generally, and Gulzar Sahib also uh, you know, attended some of those informal sessions. The effort was to give, or to present this aesthetic embodiment of Islam, rather than just focusing on legal, and uh, political aspect of Islam. And I think now, 25, 30 years down the line, this has become an uh, urgency. And when I was listening to Muhammad Keshafti, and then before that, um, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Bafa Ali, I think this is the time when we need to revisit the efforts and the ideas of uh, people like Jalal Sahib Marhum, that how you know, this heritage of Islam which remains unknown, not only to non-Muslims, but also to many Muslims as well. Generally, when we talk of 
Islamic heritage, we either talk of uh, poetry and or we focus on architecture. I'm not undervaluing those areas, but not much is done in areas like music or in areas like uh, painting or metallic art or many other forms of art, uh, which remain uh, sort of unknown. I feel that people like Jalaluddin um, introduced Islamic art in the West, you know, especially that exhibition of 1989, when many people in the Muslim world and in the West didn't know much about this uh, aspect of Islam, Islamic art. And it reminded me of 1960s, when there was a first uh, uh, exhibition on African art at the British Museum, and somebody told Picasso about it. And Picasso, oh, there's, a, there's an exhibition on African art in London. And Picasso, in a very arrogant way, said, African art, never heard of it. So I think these were kind of, these are the kind of attitudes uh, which one came across when people talked about Islamic art. And I think that situation sadly has come back. Come back. Uh, Islam is mostly seen as a political ideology by many Muslims and by non-Muslims. So I think the magazine that you people used to bring out, I think we need it more now. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, there is South Asian Institute, uh, which will take the initiative in areas like history of ideas, history of philosophy. And I think Salima was very right when she suggested that uh, we should establish something more durable uh, in the memory of Dalal Saab. I would say that, I know Zia is not here, but maybe I could recommend it to him, or maybe you could recommend to him that uh, Muslim Institute uh, should organize an annual lecture uh, which could be a sponsored lecture um, in memory of Jalaluddin Ahmed. And then we could move on from that lecture and we could invite people, you know, who work on Islamic art especially. So Islamic art, you know, being introduced by experts uh, to wider audience. And then, you know, fellowship or a chair could be established maybe in Karachi or maybe in London or maybe in Chicago. So I think these are the things where, which we need to undertake. I was so happy to see Salima because Salima studied at my university 50 years ago. And we invited her back three years ago and she gave a talk about Pakistani art. And then two years ago, uh, my university gave her an honorary degree, PhD degree. So, um, so there is this uh, powerful tradition that uh, the Lal Saab contributed into. And I'm glad that you know, there are more knowledgeable people about the Lal Saab and his wonderful work here and out there in the wider world, whether it's Malaysia or Jordan or Morocco or Pakistan or Britain. I remember him as a very humble man. I remember him as an institution builder. I remember him a very quiet person, uh, but he was a man with vision. He was a man with energy. And um, it was fantastic to know him. And I know it's a great loss uh, for all of us, uh, but I think he will remain there as an inspiration for all of us. Thank you for giving me this time. Well, thank you very much, Iftikhar. As always, uh, very, very profound words and, and good ideas. And we'll follow up definitely on, on some of your ideas. It's, uh, it's very timely that these kind of things need to be done. Thank you for uh, staying up and, and being with us. Um, now I'll ask Al-Noor, Mehta, Al-Noor. Can you hear me? Ah. Can you hear me? Okay, wonderful. Yes, we can. Welcome. Well, when I got a message from you, Zafar, um, a few days ago, I was so uh, kind of overwhelmed by a number of things, not least, um, you know, kind of hearing about the sad uh, loss of uh, Jalal Sahab and the work I did with him. So I was at the time a curator at Gallery Oldham in the, in the early 90s. And I wanted to curate a show of contemporary art from Pakistan. And at that time, actually not much art from Pakistan was presented in the UK. So it was pretty much a new territory in terms of research. So I was undertaking my research and then I spoke, uh, I don't know how I got Jalal's contact, but anyway, I did. And, um, and through his, his, his kind of network internationally, not least Pakistan, I was able to get funding from the Arts Council and then I did my research uh, together with, with Richard Hilton and um, went to Pakistan and met Salima Hashmi for the first time and met all the incredible artists. Um, the, the, the title of the show was Tampered Surface 
And then there was another exhibition as well that, um, um, that was curated at the time in, in Yorkshire um, called Intelligent Rebellion. Um, so these were the two shows that um, really kind of um, made a huge impact in, in England. And then I, my connection with Jalal continued and I was um, going to his office in London and seeing him and meeting him. And then he organized that event in uh, Jordan um, with, with uh, you know, Wajdan Ali, Princess Wajdan Ali. And I was also a participant uh, at that event. And through the work I did initially in Oldham, I then founded an organization, a South Asian organization called Shisha, which was funded by the Arts Council. And uh, that lasted for 10 years. And through Shisha, I organized this new project called the Asia Triangle Manchester, which still continues. I'm now um, um, a, uh, an academic at Manchester Metropolitan University uh, with, with my particular focus on, on Asian cultures. I've just been given a, um, a professorship, a junior professorship at the Beacon House University in Lahore. So I guess what I'm saying is all of these things have happened initially through my uh, long lasting relationship with Jalal Shah and, and, and his passion, his vision. And I agree with everything that everybody has said, you know, he would just motivate you, you know, and, and he would champion the work that you're doing and, and, and just sort of uh, push you. So I, I really, really have incredibly fond memories. And I think that it is absolutely possible in terms of what all other colleagues have spoken about in terms of a scholarship under his name, you know, a book that one could, you know, uh, write, write on and, and to celebrate, celebrate what an amazing, amazing guy he was. Thank you. Thank you very much, al -Nur. And I'll certainly be back to you with, you know, lots of ideas you're leaving us and uh, the things that we discussed earlier also. So I think, um, yeah, I think it'll be very, uh, you know, proper and appropriate for us to be carrying on this work in this fashion, scholarships, a book, you know, whatever. So thank you for sharing that with us. And can we go to Fozia? Okay. Fozia? This is a great initiative. Uh, thank you, Zafar, and thank you, Sardin. This is brilliant. Uh, um, I'm sorry I missed out on, on the conversation before this. Abhi, have you many joined here? Okay. okay. Well, it's all, be, it's all being recorded, so you will get to hear okay. it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, your, your piece, you want to share something with us about the Lord's G G G G G Yeah, I've had, a, as you know, uh, Zafar, I've had a, a nice, long ha a relationship with Azrapa, Jalal Bhai, and um, as you know, they were uh, doing arts in the Islamic world, and, and I, we met at that time. And uh, Jalal Bhai was kind enough. I was doing Zameen, and I started taking it on myself. And uh, at that time, he was kind enough to give me the space in the office at Grosvenor Crescent. So we were there, and we had this, these rooms, two rooms, and it, we worked very well over there. And what I would know, I mean, I cannot even thank him enough, and uh, it was it was just uh, very kind of him. And uh, at that time, I remember that uh, uh, firstly he was very very cooperative, very supportive, very very supportive. And then the way I would see uh, his hard work, his dedication to arts and the Islamic world, and also what was fascinating was the way he and Azra Appa had this synergy that I was fascinated about. They would think alike, they would confer, they would, uh, and, and, and the, this relationship that they had was beautiful. And I remember every time I was fascinated is that when Azra Appa would, uh, they would be leaving, he would be standing there with her coat. And I have never seen this in my life, you know. He would be standing there with her, his, with her coat and uh, she would be there like a royal person, you know, wearing her coat. So this is our long relation. Then I came back to Pakistan, Jalal Bhai. First, Jalal Bhai came before me. And then we uh, met up. And then I just felt that it was payback time for me. 
he was very happy and supportive and and cooperative with me so now i want to do something and that's how i joined forma for several years and that's how we worked together in organizing exhibitions and helping with a whole lot of other things but i have to tell you one thing is that dilal bhai and myself had a lot of association and whenever he would come to my office it was like his burst of energy there was so much he had to talk about there was so much that he had to tell there was so much that he had to share that you know all work aside it was like now concentrated time for jalal bhai and he he didn't make an appointment he just walked in and i think he did that everywhere but you know the way he inspired everybody the way he was i just think that uh, his memory and the way uh, there will be no other person like jalal bhai that's that's how i feel no other person in the art world will be born again like jalaluddin ahmed thank you so much fozia for that and uh, we'll certainly be i'll be conferring with you a, a lot of things and now i'll go to hamad uh, nasser uh, hamad welcome and thank you very much for joining us you are in london are you or uh, can you hear me now yes i can hear you now yes yeah. yes i am in london oh okay okay good well so thank you so up. much for uh, this invitation um it was of course a uh, um uh, a bit of a dhachka uh, to get your email because that's how actually i'd heard about it or um uh, jalal sahab's passing um but it's, a, it's it's been really wonderful just listening to everybody reminisce um and reminisce with uh, actually some of the energy that he always brought uh, you know when he walked into a room um um i have known jalal sahab not as long as many of the people on the zoom call um uh, but i feel sort of very lucky to have um have had that encounter and we got to know him when um, anita and i set up green cardamom uh, in london and initially uh, with the help of uh, yasmin and shahid hussain we would sort of do pop up exhibitions and and i think it was in one of those uh Uh, that we first got to meet jalal sahab um and what sort of you know what immediately hits you is a certain energy um and what only sort of then became apparent over the years when we actually then set up um a green card boom set up a a publishing program and then he would come is there was the there was a, a certain amount of joy that he would get in in seeing you know other people do uh do things that were close to you know what were very important to him and that kind of sort of uh, generosity is uh, not uh, not not found uh, too frequently in the world the other thing which i think um uh, farhad uh, fatakia sort of expressed this so beautifully was that you know this age was 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 not not something that was ever a barrier uh for him um and this kind of an intergenerational conversation or you know who plays what role uh was something that he was completely not interested in you know the, the ego was was never present um a few years ago uh, while i was sort of based in hong kong um i i was judge i was on the judging panel for uh, the jamil prize at the vna museum um and it was organized by these two curators who come in from the uh, from uh, externally and and we were just sort of chatting and um uh, managed to to find out that uh, she Camilla Canellas she's now based in Barcelona and and you know I was asking her how she ended up doing this sort of Jamil prize and and her role and then she started talking about these amazing couple who set up this magazine called uh, Arts in the Islamic World and with virtually no budget but just tremendous amount of energy and goodwill that became her her education in into islamic art uh and now so you know she's been running the the jamil prize um and and then sort of you know i was based in london and then hong kong and then would see jalal sahab you know uh, infrequently but whenever was in 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 karachi and uh, and he would always sort of say oh whenever you coming please make sure you take some time come to forma and i was just sort of so impressed by just his energy and his 
vision. You know, this idea of display, publication, discourse, research, these were not discrete categories for him. He thought holistically and, and thought about how does one bring them all together. Um, and, you know, as many people have sort of shared uh, on the Zoom, he, he was somebody that you, you know, you could not say no to. And I think it's only because I was uh, in Hong Kong and, and London and, and elsewhere that I managed to sort of escape not having written something for Jalal Saab. But it feels like that this is not a debt uh, that anybody is going to get out of. So at some point in time, I think as, as you've already observed uh, from everybody on this call, uh, well, Jalal Saab will come calling. And I think the, the, um, the points put, put across by Mohammed uh, Keshavji were, I think, so well considered and well thought out as to ways of, uh, of honoring um, not just you know, an institutional builder, but also an incredibly decent human being. And we don't have enough of them. Uh, and I think we need to recognize and honor, not honor him for that. Thank you so much, Hamad. Actually, uh, some some of the sort of words you've used are so so meaningful. Um, I feel very touched by that. That you know, there there are people thinking, young people like yourself, thinking about these things, and and um, and Jalal Saab was a catalyst for you know, uh, bridging the gap, as you said, with, with ages, you know, age never mattered and um, um, status never mattered. That was another, you know, thing of Jalal Saab. And so, so thank you for joining us and, um, and, and uh, sharing your, your reflections about it. Thank you. Well, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, you're welcome. Um, now, can we go to Raja Fozia? I'm so happy to be here tonight. It's almost midnight, I think, in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. And uh, to be able also, because of Jalal, to see all of you on the screen and to say hello and salamu alaikum. Awesome. To you, Zafa, for helping me with my exhibition years and years ago in Istanbul. To Nojihan, uh, Princess Wisdan, Mohammed Kishavji. I haven't seen Gulzar yet. I miss him very much. Um, Salima Hashim and perhaps many others whom I have not seen or heard uh, really great and perhaps this is what Jalal wanted to do to bring us together tonight and I really think that thank you Zafar for the idea and I hope that this will start something new uh, post uh, COVID-19, 2020 onwards, beyond that. Yes, uh, we knew, we met uh, Jalal uh, in 1986 because I was working at the research center in, for Islamic art and culture for the OIC in Istanbul. I just want to make it short. And um, we, he had a task uh, to do, and that was to come up with a special supplement on the Islamic heritage for the um, International Commission for the Preservation of Islamic Culture and Heritage. And after so much of hours spent talking, debating, inspiration, motivation, whatever words you can put together. Because we were working in very different spheres of, there were Turks, there were Pakistanis, there were Malaysians. All of us had different ideas, different kinds of levels of energy. But what Jalal did, he did it finally. And it was a spring, summer, 19, 87 issue and it was a tremendous effort on all parts but more importantly was that it, it was a real manifestation and we could take it around to everybody to say the commission has produced something on the arts of the Islamic heritage. I still have my personal copy I hope you will have it there also and um, 
And then, of course, we went on to the Malaysian art of Malaysia, which Sharif Azuria has elaborated. And that was working across with, while I was continuing to work in Istanbul. Everything good, everything nice, everything inspiring has been said by all those who have said long before me today. I don't have to repeat. I think they're all true and we're all blessed with that kind of man that we had. And I always thought that Jala was so small, so he, he, he couldn't have been a little bit bigger than me. And he was all this bursting with energy but most of all, he had always given me hope. When it was, it was quite tough time for me to work in Istanbul too. And here was this piece of hope that he gave me every time I had a pitfall, a shortcoming to get things together for him and for the office. There was one thing that he wanted to do in 1995. It was after the Artisans at Work Festival at Luk, organized by Uksi Mufti at Luk Vesa in uh, Islamabad. For some technical reason, we were not able to do a special issue on the artisans at work, Islamic artisans at work. I don't know whether there is room for the future for this beyond, because now the issue of artisans at work has become very critical post COVID. 2019. What's going to happen to them? And what's their future? What's the future of the craftsmanship, etc., etc., in the new decade? So perhaps I could leave you with this thought. And um, I'm here in Kuala Lumpur. Um, I'm getting on, but I hope there will still be room. It's the hope. It's still time to do something for Jala. Thank you and good night. Thank you so much. Uh, lovely to see you after such a long time. And, and uh, sorry we had to meet like this, but it's, it's been very cathartic for me to hear all of you. So, um, oh, Marisa is around. Uh, okay. Yeah, Marisa, uh, you, can you hear me? I can, yes. Yes, wonderful. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's amazing to be talking to all of you. And uh, my memories of Uncle Jalal, I've known him all my life. Um, I remember as a child, him coming over. And way back in 1948, apparently he and my father started the, uh, for, uh, uh, what was it called? The for, uh, for, uh, Fine Arts Society. And uh, so I spoke to my mother this morning and I said, can you re remember something about those times when they got together and started the society, which later actually became the Arts Council of Pakistan. So she remembered, she said, Uncle Jalal was the most dedicated person amongst us. And um, we, we had no money at that time to have any exhibitions or do anything really. So they decided to have a ball. Uh, and they had uh, organized the ball, a ball at the Metropole Hotel. And uh, they had Prince Ali Khan come. And uh, she was remembering and she said, we got new clothes. And then we had this beat up old car. And Uncle Jalal and us, we went and we got paintings from whoever could donate. And we had a little auction. And we made money for, for the Fine Arts Society. <laughs> So it was very interesting, the stories she was telling me of way back in the early 50s. And then I remember in the 70s when FOMA was start, restarted actually. And uh, again, he used to come to our, my father's house and they were so enthusiastic. Um, and then they actually got a plot of land given by the Sin government at that time. Um, I think there was, um, this gentleman who was quite well known, Jam Sadiq, he gave them, a, uh, granted them a plot of land. But unfortunately at that time, there were no funds to make this museum. So by the time they were more active, um, the land was taken away. So Jalal Sa worked so hard to get that back. 
and I mean, he, he was tireless. He did so much for art and, and totally selfless. Like his aim was just to promote art and nothing else. He didn't want anything for himself. Um, my mother was saying he never wanted a painting for himself or, you know, that was just the way he was. He was amazing. Very gentle, very lovely man. I, I have such fond memories of him. And then my aunt, Zubeda Aga, he was very close to her and so supportive of her art and uh, the gallery of contemporary art that she worked on. He was, he was amazing. I don't know what else I could say about him. Lovely, lovely person and I miss him. Thank you very much for those uh, personal, that personal account is uh, very touching. Um, We'll ask uh, Marcella Nessam. Marcella, can you hear me? Um, I don't want to take a lot of time either because um, we've been going on for a long time, but wow, it's been so fascinating hearing all these people who know uh, Jalal, uh, who appreciate him. I appreciate him so much. Um, he is more than an institution. He's a dozen institutions, and I think we're, we've all been aware of that. Thank you, uh, Zafar, for arranging this, number one. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sharina Abzol, for hosting it, um, and Asad for <laughs> organizing the technical aspects. Um, I go Back with uh, Jalal to, I don't know if it was, uh, probably the early 80s. Um, I met him in Karachi. Uh, he, he asked me to write for the uh, magazine. And uh, so we met a few times in Karachi. And then I remember uh, meeting with him in London. And that's when I met Zuffer and um, felt, um, quite intimidated actually because here was this these people that had this incredible magazine when no one else in the world had any interest or very little interest in contemporary Islamic art or art of uh, South Asia um, and when I would go to see Jalal first I would meet with Zafar <laughs> who would take me into the office and made me feel, I think, a little bit more comfortable because Jalal, to me, was this formidable um, person that had control of uh, all of this uh, intelligence and this magazine. And I was very aware of his Art in Pakistan book, um, which is the book that I used when I wrote my dissertation on Abdurrahman Chuktai. There was nothing else available. It was just Jalal's book. There was nothing. And then I used it again when I did um, my first book on the uh, contemporary art of Pakistan, contemporary painting of Pakistan, because there wasn't really any sculpture in Pakistan in, uh, until, what, maybe like 20 years ago? So it was painting. And again, it was the art of Pakistan book by Wow, that was my main resource. Um, it's amazing how much has happened in such a short period of time. But uh, so much of it is owed to uh, Jalal. And my whole career, I believe, is really due to Jalal. Um, in the time since I met him, which was probably the early 80s, until now, I've published about six books. And uh, some of them are on India as well as Pakistan, but I really owe my whole start to Jalal, who gave me uh, suggestions for themes uh, to write for the um, uh, for his magazine, um, Art in the Islamic World. Uh, um, so I want to say just thanks, a uh, huge thanks to Jalal. I'm sure you're going to be aware of my thanks. Um, I also, uh, FOMA, ah, what a contribution FOMA is. And I feel really honored because I think that the first book that, um, that Jalal initiated in FOMA was for the art of Lubna Aga. 
And Lubna happened to be in the United States at that time, and then she asked me to write the book. So I think maybe the first Homa book uh, on contemporary art was Lubna's book, of which I was able to be the author. Um, what else? Just, um, I think essentially that's all I need to say. Again, uh, uh, thanks to Jalal and Ezra too, and to Zafar. Well, one more thing. And also thanks to uh, Sajid Rizvi. I hope that he could be mentioned. I talked with Sajid um, yesterday. Um, actually, he's publishing a book that, of mine that'll come out on miniature painting probably in a couple of months. I hope people will look for it on contemporary miniature painting. Uh, he digitized all of Jalal's um, publications and they're just waiting for a little bit more of a financial infusion to um, make that become uh, available, uh, broadly available. So Jalal's um, publications will be available. Uh, Sajid Rizvi with Saffron Books has, uh, has digitized it. So thanks to Sajid as well. Thanks to Zafar. Thanks to Shireen and Avzal. And um, I've, I've loved every minute of this. So I'll sign off. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marcella, for all those memories. Um, thank you. Then I'll go to Rahat once again. Rahat, you have Anwar's message. Okay, Thank I'll you. go ahead. Thank you. Okay, this message is from my brother, elder brother Anwar Jalal. Unfortunately, he's from Lahore and he could not come on board. Uh, he tried his best. He's been trying, he's still trying. I think he must have tried me as well several times. Finally, uh, we decided, I told him, I advised him, and he thought it's a good idea that he would at least write down something and send it over to me as soon as possible so that I can convey it to all of you. And that's what I'm, I'm going to do. So a message from him. I'm absolutely overwhelmed with emotions as I see all these eminent personalities in their own fields who have come together to remember and to pay homage to my dear father, Jalaluddin Ahmed, who I feel is also around here somewhere with us, at least in spirit. Therefore, please excuse me if I slip up here or tend to break down there. Me and my family is eternally grateful to Mr. Zafal Malik, who is also really family to us, going by his intensely close and long association with my father and mother over many, many years, for floating this wonderful idea of bringing all of us together on this platform today. We are also extremely grateful to the management of South Asia Institute for offering this platform to us and host, hosting this meeting for the love of art and those who dedicate their lives for its promotion. And of course, we are most sincerely grateful to all the participants who have so kindly found time to grace this occasion and to those also who wanted to but could not attend this memorial due to time constraints as we cover several time zones, some not convenient at all, I realize. Needless to say, your participation is a source of enormous strength for my family as we struggle with finding the courage and fortitude to deal with the reality of my father returning back to his creator. An inevitability that we all have to accept and be prepared for as we, as we seek consolation in our firm belief that Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. I shall not take much of your precious time, particularly since we are here today to mainly listen. And to all these eminent personalities, we have to listen and love to listen, and who are in their own walks of life and who have so kindly virtually gathered here and blessed us with their presence. But I would like to leave with you a couplet in Urdu that my dear father used to remind me of whenever I raised any doubts about the success of his never-ending stream of dreams and projects, all dedicated to the twin mission of his life, Pakistan and art, not necessarily in that order. By suggesting that how would he accomplish them without any financial resources? He would say, Bana leta hai mauje khoon dil se ek chaman apna. Bana leta hai mauje khoon dil se ek chaman apna. We can never thank you enough for your participation. All of you, thank you very much. In what I would prefer to call a celebration of a life very well lived. Long live Jalaluddin's 
traditions and ways. Rest in peace, dear dad. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very beautiful, beautiful note, Rahat. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay, I, uh, we have a message from uh, Wahab Jafar Sahib. Um, and um, I will read just part of it is uh, given a very profound um, and uh, memory filled uh, note. Um, I will just read and I actually did apologize to him that I won't be able to read the whole of it, but I'll read part of it and then we'll share it in, in the uh, uh, film that we make. Um, it will be put on that. So. Um, so here, here goes uh, Bahab Saab's uh, message and I'll read just uh, the first portion of it. I knew of Mr. Jalaluddin Ahmed through his publication, Art in Pakistan. First published in 1954, I managed to find the third edition of 64 from a bookseller on the footpath in Sadar Karachi in 69. The book not only brought me into the art world of Pakistan, but also gave me a widespread uh, awakening and interest in art, courtesy Ali Imam. I had the pleasure of meeting Jalal Saab in person for the first time at Indus Gallery in Karachi during the early 70s. He had come from London in connection with allocation of a plot of land for construction of a museum of modern art in Karachi. Meeting him, I was struck by his boundless energy and ambition. He made repeated visits in the 80s and 90s and eventually setting in Karachi. Art in the arts in the Islamic world was a feather in the cap of Jalal Saab and Zafar Malik in London. I was the launching of the first issue in Karachi at the jam-packed Hall of the Arts Council in 1983. When he settled in Karachi, he was a live wire and took Forma um, to greater heights. His, he single-handedly got made a reference library of art books and news cuttings. The archives of Ali Imam and myself were thrown open to Jalal Saab. He used to come twice a week to my residence and pick up two files, uh, had it photocopied and brought back, uh, and brought it back and collecting others. Uh, this carried on religiously for five months. So with that, um, thank you very much, uh, Wahab Saab, for your um, uh, timely kind of reminder of, uh, of times past. Um, well, I, I think, um, all of you have been, uh, we've kept some people up very late. I mean, I particularly think of Kuala Lumpur, Sharif Azuria and, um, Raja Fozia, um, are there, uh, Vaira didn't, uh, couldn't connect somehow, but anyway, um, so I, uh, actually, We've reached towards the end now, so um, it's, uh, it's strange um, that it's been, you know, we are talking about somebody as if he is actually here. It's, it's, he's left us so much material to be enthusiastic about. So it's a measure of the man who kept uh, such eminent company that, you know, we got to hear such articulate poetic, wonderful, wise, graceful, and meaningful words. I mean, it's, how many times has that happened? It's been cathartic for me, for sure, to, to feel that, you know, these people have been, um, uh, there's so much there, and I think it needs to be collected. So I don't have um, words to thank each one of you for sharing your memories and reflections. It's been a huge experience. Uh, and. Uh, and I hope that the recording will be available soon so that we can share it uh, and it'll benefit uh, a larger audience. Um, so there are no goodbyes. Uh, work starts here on documenting memories and reflections so that we don't forget our history once again, especially in the most vulnerable of areas uh, such as art. Okay? So I'm eternally ex you know, grateful for, uh, for, to all of you for sharing your precious time with us. Thank you very much. And thank you once again, Afzal and Shireen, for, for hosting this, for providing this gracious space, um, which was very pertinent to this kind of uh, memorial. So with that, I thank everyone. Thank you very much for your uh, time from different time zones. People have sat up past midnight in some places. 
Dr. Vidhan, I think, is also kind of late there in Amman also. I think it's about 10 o'clock or something. And Karachi, Lahore, um, everybody. I, I'm very, very grateful um, for, for your time and for sharing this with us. Uh, we'll be back soon with the, with the film, which will be uh, put on the uh, SAI website. And I think there'll be some uh, on some of the platforms as well, perhaps Facebook and, and, um, and then we, we have our work cut out. We have more to do. Thank you.